Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. Uh, today we are going to look at my red wigglers in my tower system. And if you want to get into worm composting but don't have very much room, this is actually one of the best ways to house, you know, a couple pounds of worms and process lots of household waste in just a small area. You could manage this very intensely and manage to do very well if you were to um, add your bedding and your food every week. That's not exactly how I do mine. But as we're going through this, we're going to just talk about the way that I manage this. What I do is not necessarily a hard fast rule. This is how I do things. It's kind of a guide point. And so I don't want everybody to think if I don't do it exactly like the people on YouTube, I'm not gonna be successful. What I try to teach people is that every person that is doing vermicompost has to find their own way, if you will. And basically, that means you have to adjust for your own lifestyle. Are you a family of four, a family of eight? Are you a empty nester? You know, what is your situation? What we're doing right now is we're looking at this top layer, which has been resting. And I see just a couple of worms here, just a few. So we're gonna hand pick those out and harvest this top part. Right now, this has been going for probably two to three months maybe even longer. So this is ready to go into the garden. And as I've said before, a lot of times I do choose to sift, uh, but you don't have to. Sifting is just, you know, I started sifting because I do have bonsais and I prefer to have very small particle size and I don't want there to be um, seeds growing in my plants. But, this is probably just gonna go in the garden and it's totally fine if I get a pumpkin surprise. So this is the rusting tray. That one's gonna be harvested. This becomes the new rusting tray. This is what we fed. Okay, so this is what was fed last time. It was fed some electric compost, peppers, and some carrots. So let's take a closer look and see if we can see any of that food left. Okay, it looks very nice on the top here. Looks like you could almost harvest this layer. And I think I said that last time, that this layer was so close to the other layer in uh, being done that I thought we could probably harvest this one again very quickly. You can see that there are still worms in here. It's also really wet. So when I, so I wanted to talk about my goals, which is one of the things you need to Think about when you have a worm bin or you're planning on getting a worm bin, you know, what is your goal? And in the case of this one for me, it this is a, a teaching bin for people who are new to this. A lot of times it's just easier to buy a pre-made system, um, get a couple pounds of worms, or if you don't have the money, a very few amount of worms, this is stackable. So you can start with one or two layers and then graduate as your worms multiply. Just looking at what my goals are for this, I am relying on my upper layers and the feeding of those upper layers, which is usually kind of wet, to drip down and pre-compost the layers below. That's one of the things that my plan for this bin allows for. All right, let's look at the next layer down. So number two, what my expectations for this bin are is that the worms and their little pill bug buddies are going to move between the layers. And you know, while they're doing that, they're not just, you know, free range worms and doing what they want to do. They are actually taking with them the beneficial microbes that help decompose everything. Um, a lot of people believe that their worms are going to be the ones doing all of the work here but the truth of the matter is the worms are kind of the finishing crew you have got your shredders like the pill bugs you also have some composters called springtails which if if i can hold still long enough maybe you can see them they are teeny tiny little white crawly things 
and they actually process the food along with the bacteria and the fungus to make it palatable and you know so the worms can slurp it up like a little straw so there's there's several crews in this so when you first get a worm bin maybe you think that you're just going to have worms in there but if you do you're going to find out very quickly that your process is not going to work very fast or efficiently because the worms need a team So this layer down here has not had any intervention by people. It's never had any people food or anything. It's a little dry right now, but you can tell that it's been processed quite a bit. And the reason that it's been processed quite a bit, even though it's dry, is because of those shredders. The uh, pill bugs and the springtails and all of that don't need the same moisture to be healthy and happy that the worms do. So those other critters can get in there and work on things before the worms even start. And then the third thing that I would say is part of my particular goal for this worm bin is that I can leave it for three weeks, two or three weeks. So I'm going to make sure that they have enough food, slow food and fast food, in order to last them that long. So I want this to be pretty hands-off in this system. I, I don't want to have to come in here every single week. But if you do, if this is your only worm bin and this is the only worm bin you're going to pay attention to, it's not going to be a problem for you to come in and take care of this every single week or maybe twice a week. Check on the moisture and quite honestly like when most people start their worm journey they are they're they're like helicopter parents they want to come look at their worms every week or every couple of days what are you guys doing in there um and although the worms don't necessarily enjoy that much attention you know the red wigglers are your good starter worms and this bin is a good starter bin if you have the money to purchase it okay every time i have one of these videos somebody asks me what size are these risers that I made? Um, right there, two and a half inches. I'll convert that to a uh, metric for you on the screen. But these are two and a half inches and these go in the corners to sort of evenly distribute the weight of the items above. And I do this on multiple layers because the farther down it goes, the more weight that it has to carry above. So it's not mandatory, but I did have somebody give me a tip one time that that was a good idea in order to make the plastic live longer. Then we're gonna look at the bottom layer here. This is bone dry down here for the most part. We just started this layer the last time that we had a video. And there's not a lot of progress here as far as the the paper goes. This is what one month of existing. You can tell that it's been dampened and that's about as far as it has gone. Then just because, let's peek at the very bottom layer, you can tell there's there's nothing but pill bugs living down here in the bottom. Uh, if it were to be very wet, then this particular area would start digesting everything and there would be worms down here all right let's reassemble here okay so then this becomes the next feeding tray the bottom one gets harvested the second one so this one is going to get some people food today and sort of with the theme with the bin last week we gave them some comfrey before it all dies for the winter. I'm gonna try and make sure that all of the bins get a little bit. And so, as you can see, there's these little baby unripe pumpkins and they can be spread out just a little bit. And so this is how much I'm gonna give them to eat for the next couple of weeks. They've got all the bedding down below and then now they have this. So now here is the resting part here. This is going to dry out, hopefully, and 
maybe the next time that I come in, I'll be able to harvest this. Now, let me show you how I set up a new layer. All right, here is my new layer. And as I'm starting to discover with this electric compost, it does not have that much nitrogen. I can tell you that I started making that pre-compost bin and with just the electric compost, it did not actually have enough nitrogen to heat up. So I think I'm gonna start incorporating that into the bedding rather than as a food. I'm thinking it's probably just not nutritious enough because I do try and put shredded paper in there so that it's nice and fluffy. I just don't think it's enough food to call it an entire meal for the worms anymore. So this is um, probably two big handfuls, rehydrated about 50-50 with water. And then I'm gonna restack the bin and put this on the bottom. Please note, if you have any questions at all about the system or vermiculture in general, please put those in the comments below. And I wanted to thank everybody for bearing with me during my, I don't know, we'll call it my Luddite phase or maybe my worm, my Blair worm project. And we're back now. And I thank everybody who stuck with me through the hard times. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody have a good day.